Hello Assurance, welcome to worship on this day. Wherever you are, however you might be viewing and watching this and participating with us in this worship experience, we are so thankful for you. We at Assurance are a church that's seeking to grow and go in Jesus. And we invite you to join us on this Jesus journey that we are on. My name is Josh Kurtz. And I'm Daniel Wilson. And we are blessed to be the pastors here at the North Lake campus. We want to share some ways that you can continue to grow and go with us in these days ahead. A couple of announcements that we would like to make known. And the first is we are collecting coats for our Matthews Closet Ministry now until November 22nd. I invite you to bring new and gently used coats as you come to worship on Sundays or throughout our office hours during the week, Monday through Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We also want to let you know that we are beginning re-entry into our North Lake campus building and worship life together. Beginning on Sunday, November 1st, we will start in-person worship inside the North Lake campus at 8.30 for a traditional service, 9.45 for a modern service, and 11 o'clock for another modern service. We invite you to pre-register for these worship experiences and more information will be forthcoming in this week ahead. But you'll see on our weekly e-blast that is sent out on Sunday mornings a pre-registration link that you can connect with so that we can prepare for your coming and our worship together. Those are some really exciting announcements uh, this morning. Uh, and before we dive into worship together, I invite you to center yourself, center your heart and mind as we join together in a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day and for the privilege it is to gather here in this place for worship, to worship you. God, you are full of love and grace, and you pour out that love and grace abundantly upon us each and every day. For that, we are thankful. And, oh God, as we gather together with our brothers and sisters this day to worship you, to bring honor and glory to your name, we come with hearts full of emotions. Some of us come overflowing with joy and excitement. And some of us come carrying the heavy weight of stress and anxiety and uncertainty. God, wherever we are, we pause in this moment and we lift those things to you. You know our hearts and minds, O oh God. And so this day we humbly pause. We come before you willing, open. Oh God, help us this day to draw closer to you. It is our heart's desire to be in a deeper, more intimate relationship with you. As we come and we offer our time, our energy, our gifts, may you use all these things to further your kingdom here on earth. God, help us to be the people you have called us to be. Help us to be a sign in the world around us a beacon of your hope and grace and love. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the division and the uncertainty, it is our desire to be your people, united in your love and grace. Help us to live that out in our day-to-day -day lives, in all that we do, everywhere we go. Oh God, we give you thanks for all that you do for us. We pray that you would hear these, all of our prayers, 
and that you would feel the love we have from you, for you, from the bottoms of our hearts. For it is in your precious and holy name we pray these things. Amen. upon the waters the great unknown where feet may fail and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you never failed and you won't start now Hi, I'm, I'm Jesse Ennis, local pastor here at Assurance United Methodist Church. And, and when our senior pastor, Josh, mentioned the playlist series, I, I jumped at the opportunity to, to speak about a song that has, has really impacted my life story. It's a song titled Worth It. It's a, by, a, by an artist titled Lecrae, and it's, on, it's the last song on his All Things Work Together album. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of hip hop music. But as I grew in my faith, I, I learned that I had, to, I had to start to change some of the music that I listened to. And thankfully, my, my youth director at the time, Margie Ligon, at the time when I was a youth at Assurance United Methodist Church, she introduced me to Lecrae. And not only to Lecrae, but I started to discover that there was a, a, a totally different group of, of hip hop artists, of Christian hip hop artists, who were so vulnerable in their music, more vulnerable than any other genre that I had ever heard of. 
they spoke so directly to me more than a Chris Tomlin song more than a Lauren Daigle song ever did and so when Lecrae released an album that was solely based on his experiences in the Book of Romans I, I jumped at the opportunity to listen to that I, I and I was all in from that moment on I'm not sure that I've ever told anyone this at Assurance, but there was a period in my life when I would leave the church campus just feeling so defeated. I would miss the mark in some way and, and I would begin to just say some horrible things to myself. Things like, I'm really stupid. I'm just so dumb. Uh, I, I, I'm the worst. You know, they should just fire me. Better yet, I should quit. And But then what would I do if I quit? Because no one else would hire me. Because I'm absolutely worthless. I would go on and on like this until, until I would finally just put on some music. And I would... I would listen to some songs and eventually I would end up in this album again. And I would listen to the last four songs of this album and and I would just I would just weep. There are two things that that can happen to a person who has an unbiblical view of themselves. You either end up with a with an inflated view or a deflated view of yourself. An inflated view is pride. A deflated view, which is the view that I struggled with, is shame. Now, guilt and shame might seem like the same things because they, they, they come in the same package, they usually come together, but guilt is what happens when you miss the mark. It's the feeling that you get that you have missed the mark. Shame says that I have not only missed the mark, but it's obvious that I missed the mark. Of course I missed the mark because I am worthless. Shame usually enters a person's life when, when one broken person makes another broken person feel ashamed for not being whole, forgetting that they are also a broken person. Now, Paul writes the letter to the Romans, a church that is divided between Jews and non-Jews. And he, he writes it as a way to, to unify a church based on presenting them the gospel in their context. Now, in chapter 5 of, and verse 20 of chapter 5 in the book of Romans, Paul says, The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Now, according to Paul, the law that was given to Moses and to his descendants, that law was given so that the Israelites would see the ways in which they missed the mark. But not only would they begin to see where they missed the mark, they would realize that there are things that God was calling them to that they also couldn't live up to. As they, as they learned the law, they learned how difficult it was to keep the law. So essentially what happened is, is it's like, I didn't want any fries until you told me I couldn't have any fries. But Paul says that the more that sin increased, the more God's grace also increased. With God, there is always more grace than their sin. Always. But we find it so difficult to accept the forgiveness and the grace that God is so freely willing to give. When we miss the mark, we feel ashamed. We, we, we feel shame and, and we end up in destructive behaviors in an attempt to, 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 to numb ourselves from the pain that comes with that shame. But what ends up happening is those destructive behaviors also cause us to feel guilty, which causes us to feel shame, which causes us to get back into those destructive behaviors. 
And we might say that, you know, this is the last time, but the guilt and that will always come back because we will always somehow fall short. And we will, when we will go back into that feeling of shame and back into that destructive behavior, creating a cycle for ourselves. But friends, Christ has died for us. Christ has died for all of the ways in which we have missed the mark. Think about the worst thing that you have ever done. Christ, Jesus, paid it all. And you never deserved it. You can't deserve it. You don't deserve it. But he continues to give that to you as a free gift. It's not something that you can earn. It's the grace of God in your life. Christ's death replaces your punishment. Christ's righteousness replaces your unrighteousness. His mercy and grace replaces your shame. Now when we feel guilt, grace replaces our shame so that we don't end up back in that cycle of guilt and shame and destructive behavior. But when we feel guilt, we are reminded that the sin that we committed does not define us. We are reminded that we are worth more than that sin says that we are worth. And so we are able to actually tackle and deal with those destructive behaviors and deal with the reasons why we feel guilty to begin with, freeing us from that cycle. Now, friends, we need three things to deal with our shame. One is we need the truth of Scripture. We need the truth that tells us that we are created in the image and the likeness of God and that God's grace covers all of our sin. Secondly, we need to tell ourselves better stories, more accurate stories about ourselves. Stories that, that, that don't say that we're worthless, but stories that, that remind us that we are redeemed. And that as redeemed people, we have another opportunity to live in the, the calling that God has placed in our lives. And thirdly, we need to surround ourselves with people who not only tell us what we need to hear, but people who are able to open our eyes to the ways in which we are beating ourselves up and ways in which we need to start to speak healthier stories into our own lives. Now, I still listen to that album a lot. I love that album, even though I don't really need uh, I don't really need that, that message so much. I don't need that reminder so much because I found my worth in Christ. But I still listen to it because the songs are just such good songs. But I, I bring it up today because I'm hoping that, that the same encouragement that I received when I really needed it, I'm hoping that you might feel that same encouragement today. Because I am who I am in and through Christ Jesus. And I'm hoping today that you realize, as I have realized, that I am worth dying for. And so are you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Gracious God, I want to thank you so much for this day. I want to thank you so much for for every reminder that we have, that you have placed grace in our lives to free us from, from guilt and from shame. And so I thank you, I thank you today for, for every opportunity where you are opening our eyes to the sins in which we are committing, but reminding us that we aren't sinners anymore, but that we are grace-filled children of God. And so, God, I pray that that truth continues to go with us. I pray that your Holy Spirit continues to fill us with your love. And I pray that as we feel this love in our bodies, that we are able to share this love with our community so that they might also know the truth about themselves in and through Scripture. And so that they might also feel the grace that has called us out of darkness into in unapproachable light.
God, I thank you today and every day for the ways in which Christ has sacrificed it all for us. And it's at his feet I leave this prayer. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. Be still, there is a healer. His love is deeper than the sea. His mercy is unfailing. His arms a fortress for the weak. Let faith arise. Let faith arise I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart these things I remember You are faithful God forever Be still, there is a river that flows from Calvary's tree, a fountain for the thirsty. Your grace that washes over me, let faith arise. Let faith arise I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart these things I remember You are faithful God forever let faith arise, let faith arise, open my eyes, open my eyes, let faith arise, let faith arise, open my eyes, open my eyes, I lift my hands to believe again. You are my refuge, you are my strength As I pour out my heart of these things I remember You are faithful God forever I lift my hands to believe again You are my refuge, you are my strength as I pour out my heart these things, I remember you are faithful, God, you faithful, God, forever. You are faithful, God, forever. 